using Powtoon. Today I'll be talking about the effect that politics have on the businesses in Switzerland. To understand the political effects of the government on the business, we first need to understand the structure of the Swiss parliament. So the Swiss government body is among the oldest constitutions in the world, as it was adopted in 1848. This also contributes to it being one of the most stable constitutions in the world. So there are basically three main governing bodies on the federal level. The bicameral parliament, which is a legislative, the federal council, which is executive, and the federal court, which is judicial. The federal council constitutes the federal government. It also directs the federal administration and serves as the collective head of state. As far as parliament goes, the Swiss parliament consists of two houses, the Council of States, which has 46 representatives, who are elected under a system determined by each canton, and also the National Council, which consists of 200 members who are elected under a system of proportional representation. Members of both houses serve for four years respectively. When both houses are in joint session, they are known collectively as the Federal Assembly. Switzerland is a democratic country. Through referendums, citizens may challenge any law passed by parliament, and through initiatives, they may introduce amendments to the federal constitution, thus making Switzerland a direct democracy. By calling a federal referendum, a group of citizens may challenge a law passed by parliament, and if they gather 50,000 signatures against the law, within 100 days. If so, a national vote is scheduled where voters decide by a simple majority whether to accept or reject the law. And this just goes to show how much power a regular citizen has in Switzerland. And also, any eight cantons together can also call a referendum on a federal law. An extremely unique factor about the Swiss government is the presidential campaign structure. The president is sworn in for one year term and the candidates are the head of various departments within the assembly. These departments include the internal affairs, foreign affairs, justice, energy traffic and environment, economy and education, finances, and lastly, the Defense and Sports Administration. The President also has no additional power and remains the head of a department within the administration. If the department from which the President is from gets chosen into power, then it might be a, a clever move to open up a business related to that department, as there might be certain incentives being offered soon. An extremely attractive feature of Switzerland is that they have a stable, consensus-based governance system which is designed to cultivate direct democracy. As a decentralized true confederation of states, political and administrative responsibilities are divided among the federal, which is also more known as the national, and under the cantonal and municipal levels of government. This minimizes any chances of unfair play to happen within the administration. Each canton has its own constitution, their own code of civil procedure, and parliament chamber. The constitution provides for the separation of three branches of government, which are the federal assembly, the federal council, and the federal tribunal. This goes to show that the Swiss will do everything in their power to provide an even playing field for their citizens. Switzerland is like a tax haven for business owners as the Swiss tax rates for companies are among the lowest anywhere in Europe. The total corporate taxes are approximately 17-28% to on PBT and are levied at federal, cantonal and municipal levels which is extremely attractive for anyone thinking about starting a business in Switzerland. Such approach is resulting in inter-cantonal and inter-municipal tax competition and constantly the lowers the tax burden. And a, an extremely attractive feature that they have is that they have a 0% average tar tariff rate. But keep in mind that this is an average, not always. So for businesses, special tax rulings are offered by most cantons in Switzerland that can reduce the already moderate tax burden to extremely attractive levels. Furthermore, both individuals and legal entities can benefit from double taxation treaties and the bilateral agreements. Business security is a priority in Switzerland, which is proven as in 2013 the government brought in anti-corruption laws to make bribery almost always a criminal offense. The protection of property rights are also strongly enforced. Anyone trading, manufacturing, or otherwise engaged in business must be registered in a relevant register of commerce. The register is a public document. So if you are conducting operations which involve other businesses, you can easily check if there are a legally registered business which makes conducting business with them more reliable, as you know that they are registered. Switzerland is among the best when it comes to supporting new businesses, as the efficient regulatory framework strongly facilitates entrepreneurial activity, allowing business formation and operation to be dynamic. 
The government generally takes a hands-off approach in sectors dominated by small businesses. Overall, labor regulations are relatively flexible, and the non-salary cost of hiring a worker is moderate. As a leading financial center, the highly developed financial sector provides a wide range of financial instruments for foreign and domestic investors. Switzerland offers support on various levels to entrepreneurs who are willing to move or create a business on the territory. New companies, especially if active in the field of innovative technologies, are supported at both the federal and the cantonal levels through a vast number of available incentives and subsidies. Switzerland is not bound by its European legislation because it is neither a member state of the European Union nor of the European Economic Area. This allows Switzerland the autonomy to regulate its financial service industries as it deems fit. There are also some attractive bonuses offered by the Swiss government. These are several promotional measures at both the federal and cantonal level that are granted in connection with investment projects and the creation of jobs. There are also incentives available at the federal level which include tax holiday, guaranteed loans, and interest subsidies on bank credit.